Yo, what is up guys? It's the Goblin, back again with another Call of Duty Black Ops 3 video, and this one is a banger. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys tips on how to dominate Nuketown every single damn time. And in this gameplay, I dominate pretty well. I get off to a bit of a slow start, but I come out with a 106 to 6 nuclear gameplay. So 100 plus and a nuclear, and it's just absolutely crazy. I was going off on this uh, map, and I was using this uh, VMP class, and I switch off to the M8 class and all that sort of stuff. So my classes are all over the place but I'm gonna give you guys all the tips you guys need to dominate on Nuketown so if you guys could all drop a like on this video I would really appreciate that I made a video talking about Nuketown tips like right after the game came out but that was before Nuketown was in all the playlists and as popular as it is now basically I'm gonna cover everything in this video and if you guys just smash up a, a ton of likes on this thing I'll have another video going up late night you guys have been supporting the channel amazingly so drop some likes on this thing and let's get right into this video talking about all the tips you guys need for Nuketown so I am using this VMP class but I think I do switch it out for the M8 class and the M8 class is really what I rock with and what gets me that 100 plus kill gameplay and basically let's first go over a class setup for Nuketown and then tips on how to dominate it every time now I know you guys say Goblin you play a lot of Nuketown and I do I, I can admit that I play a lot of Nuketown I used to always love the Chaos Mosh Pit playlist and now Nuketown is in normal playlist and I find that the people or the fans of Black Ops 3 they're always voting for Nuketown whether you're in a like a Chaos Mosh Pit Nuketown sort of playlist List, or you're just in normal domination or normal team deathmatch I'm sure there's people watching this video that hate Nuketown there's people watching this video that love Nuketown but I'm recovering it and giving you guys everything you guys need to know to be able to dominate this map every single damn time now I pretty much do well on this map most of the time I think overall this is my best map in the game this one in combine I'm a small map player I'm a rusher um, on this gameplay I think I'm playing sort of different play styles but let's go over tips you guys will need to dominate Nuketown every time first of all is the class setup now, for a class setup, there's two main things you're going to need on Nuketown. Now, Nuketown can be played with a shotgun. It can be played with an assault rifle. It can be played with an LMG. It can be played with an SMG. With You know, you can do well with pretty much anything on Nuketown. Even a sniper, you could do pretty much uh, pretty well with. But for Nuketown, the two things you need on your class setup guaranteed are, number one, Flak Jacket. Flak Jacket is not an option here. I think on this first, on this VMP class, I have six cents or something. I don't know what I was thinking, but on my M8 class, I definitely do have flak jacket you need flak jacket man flak jacket is needed for um for Nuketown because of all the explosives. There's cars blowing up. There's grenades blowing up. There's tons of stuff, you know, RC cars, kills, just everything is blowing up on this map. Look at that. Cars are always blowing up. You definitely need to have Flak Jacket. That is the number one perk. I would say never skip out on Flak Jacket. A few times I've gone, you know, using Sixth Sense or using Afterburner, and in the end, I just end up dying to a random grenade or an RC car, or something dumb, and that just makes me rage. Flak Jacket is a perk you guys need for this map. Now, the next perk you're going to need is Tac Mask simply because in Black Ops 3 a lot of people that don't really use more than two attachments or some people only use like a red dot with grip or something like that those people that don't really maximize their class loadouts they have tons of extra spots in Black Ops 3 and they tend to run EMP grenades, stun grenade, all, all sorts of grenades, flashbang grenades, and that's why you need tack mass because you're going to be get grenaded. People spawn on this map, they throw a grenade, they throw a stun. It's just typical stuff that goes down on Nuketown. In order to have success on this map, those two perks are the things that give me success every time. Now, for my middle perks, I usually run hardwire fast hands or scavenger fast hands. It depends. If you're sitting back more, you're going to want scavenger because if you're head glitching on one of these cars, you're really not going to have the chance to go and pick up a weapon. Um, you'll just be running over scavenger packs but if you're running with you know up in their spawn with a shotgun or something you could just run fast hands hardwired or fast hands tracker is even pretty good on nuketown there's so many people's footsteps going around anything like that can be good on nuketown the class setup is mostly up to you guys to pick your preference of your favorite gun and everything like that but the one thing that i would say is required is the flak jacket attack max now that you guys have the class setup loadout how do you do well on nuketown now first of all nuketown is a really interesting map because average kill streaks like a kill streak like a sentry gun okay a sentry gun is it's an okay kill streak it's good on certain situations it's terrible in others that kill streak is a god kill streak on this map anything like the cerberus sentry gun talon you know normal kill streaks are absolutely monstrous on this map and that's why i definitely recommend running with those and i think i switched my class load out here to the m8 um because i was rocking with the the weird vmp class in the first round but now you'll see the m8 come into effect and see me max out on this i think i switched because i was close to a nuclear 
and obviously I end up getting the 100 plus as well. But as far as kill streaks, you don't need to run the big ones on this map. You can run like right here. I'm running Talon, Wraith, Hater, which are sort of high, medium high kill streaks. But I'd say I'd recommend running Lightning Strike if you're if you're like an uh, over a 1KD player, run Lightning Strike. Sentry Gun, Cerberus, and you'll do good every single time. As long as you get probably one or two sets of those streaks in that game, those streaks are going to get you like 10 kills per set. And Nuketown is all about the kill streaks and having the kill streaks go ham. Now, what I recommend is whenever I call in a Talon or a Cerberus, I don't operate it myself. I just let it be, you know, AI controlled. And then myself, I use my gun to keep getting as many kills as you can. Now, the Hater is one thing people might say. Why are you running Hater on Nuketown? Because it's pretty predictable. I personally run Hater because Nuketown, yes, it is predictable on the spawns, but it can be crazy with spawn flips. Now that you guys know the class loadout, Specialist, you probably just want to run Scythe, Tempest, Combat Focus, you know, your regular good ones. Purifier can also be very good on this map. How do you want to play Nuketown? Now, to be able to play Nuketown and understand it, it's very simple. Whatever, if you, you Nuketown is always going to be 6v6, right? There's not going to be any ground war maps. It's always going to be a 6v6 game mode. Now, if there's one person in the enemy spawn, usually their spawn won't flip. They'll just spawn in front of the building. If there's two or more people pushing the enemy spawn, 100% of the time, the enemies are going to flip. Now, listen to what I just said. This is the most important part of understanding how to do well on Nuketown. If you look on the map and two or more of your teammates are pushing into their backyard of their building, the enemies are going to spawn flip now when the enemy spawn flip on nuketown they spawn in one of two places one they spawn in the middle in one of the four corners in the middle or two they spawn in the other side back building those are basically it for the spawns there's the spawns of the corners in the middle or the corners in the back and nuketown is a simple map because uh, think of a map like breach or redwood i have no I, I don't know how many spawns there are on redwood i honestly have no clue and even if i played that map all the time i, I really wouldn't know but if you understand nuketown because it's such a small map by understanding how the spawns work in this game, and that's sort of something that I, I really understood in Modern Warfare 3 when I was like a really good pub stomper, is I would understand when the spawns are going to flip. And you can pretty much know that by looking at the minimap and obviously understanding when you push it in. Now, sometimes you're gonna want the spawns to flip. You're gonna push in yourself, you're gonna take control of their back build aid, and then their spawns are going to flip. And you basically can play this map just off of your spawn knowledge and off the rush route knowledge. When people spawn at the back, they always run straight ahead. Like if they spawn at the back left, they're gonna run straight through that garage literally almost every single time. It's not often that people spawn at the very back left and they run across the backyard and then straight up. They always go straight. And that's something you can basically find out about public match players is they are very predictable, especially on a map like Nukes. And I actually go off on this kill streak now that I think about it. This was like a, I don't know how big of a gun streak this was, but it seems like it's a pretty big gun streak. I'm not even sure. I was going off with this stacking some unstoppable medals, which is one of my favorite things to do in Black Ops 3. But people are very predictable. The spawn system is 100% predictable, and the player's routes, they're going to run towards the middle of the map. They're going to try to run to the action as fast as possible. If you're up at the top of the building, in the middle of the building, on a head glitch in the middle, no matter how you want to play it, you cut off those routes you're going to dominate nuketown every single time it's it's undoubtedly there's no way you're going to fail at dominating nuketown if you use these tips and you use for example a scythe or a combat focus to make sure you get a few kill streaks so for example what I like to do is say I'm running sentry gun on this map and Cerberus. When I get my sentry gun, I'll call in the sentry gun on the right side and I'll go and watch the left side. And there's basically nowhere the enemies can go except if they spawn flip. And basically how I can know that is by using UAVs or haters or just watching my teammates movements. I can know when they spawn flip and you're literally going to dominate Nuketown every single time. If you guys watch this gameplay right now, I am freaking unstoppable. I don't even remember how big of a gun streak this was. I probably got this gameplay, I'm not sure, maybe two, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, but I was just playing with uh, a few of my buddies here and I was absolutely stomping. I was picking up guns and everything and that's what you have to do on Nuketown. Uplink is one of the very good game modes. Now the thing with Nuketown is you guys may say, okay, that's how the spawns work for one game mode. How do they work for other game modes? They work like that for every objective game mode. Uplink, uh, whatever, capture flags, safeguard, domination, whatever other objective game modes there are, demolition. The spawns are going to work like that for Nuketown. They're going to work just how as I've said, except for Team Deathmatch and Kill Confirmed. Those ones are going to, when you're playing Team Deathmatch or Kill Confirmed on Nuketown, you really just pay attention to your teammates' locations. And because the map is so small, it's always going to spawn the enemies on the opposite side of your team. So, for example, this is one thing you can do quite well on Nuketown. Say I'm playing Kill Confirmed, I run into their spawn and I die, and I spawn at my back left spawn. 
The enemies are most likely spawning at the back right of their spawn or at the back left of their spawn. Completely opposite to me because if you're, the enemies are spawning even closer than that, this map is one of the smallest maps in the game. They need to spawn people as far away as possible and people run towards the middle. Once you understand the spawns and the common rush routes and you use this class up that I say in this video, you're going to dominate Nuketown every single damn time. Please use this. Please put these tips into work. If you guys made it to the end of the video, comment nuke or nuclear down in the comment section down below. Drop a like on this thing. Please smack that like button, baby. Smack it, smack it, smack it. Let's get 2,000 likes. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great night, and I'm out. Peace. Yeah, yeah.